Hi, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. I am joined tonight by Anna and Christian. Hello. Good evening, people. Hello to the Facebook world. Big world. Anna. Yes, it's a big world of at least five people. It's amazing. We have five people? That's great. Hey, five people. Hey. Hello, five people. It is a good evening I'm, to be here. I can't see any stats. I'm, see, I'm over here, Mr. Lota. I decided to start a new tradition. Every show I'm going to start by displaying the figure we're not reviewing. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Anna, did you decide that you're going to go rogue and like just review uh, Magic Square I'm Seekers? I'm just going to talk we're... about Magic Square Seekers tonight. And you guys see what we're going to do is you guys are going to talk about um, Earthrise Starscream. And I'm going to talk about magic square seekers but we're not going to acknowledge that we're talking about different figures it's just going to go fluidly there you go so that yeah, way you can like give soul. it all this praise and be like oh it's so great and and whatever and we can say the same thing and then but we're actually talking about different figures all right i'll be like it's really cool how the nose code tucks in the back and you'll be like it's really cool how the nose code just folds in the back and is there and we'll just act like nothing's different. It's all the same. It's going to be bizarre. Yeah, we're not really going to do that. I just brought every every version of a seeker that I have right now is on my desk. And I'm just going to rotate them around and compare y'all Starscream to him. Because I do not have this figure. Because if anyone doesn't know who watches this show, I have a one character role. And this is yet another Starscream. And I, in fact, own one star scream, and that is enough star screams. That's an accomplishment. I, I, I yeah. feel like how many characters do you have more than one per character? Because I think there's a, a fair amount. Too many these days, Lucas. Too many. It's RC, Bumblebee, Ultra Magnus, and then a bunch of stragglers who've snuck in, like Cliff Jumper and Hoist. Right now. There you go. So if anybody's looking for a cliff jumper or a hoist in their life, I need to get rid of sub because I one per character. I have an alarm set where my one per character is violated. It just beeps until I fix it. By so the way, did you see uh, Sean's custom on his cliff jumper on uh, the? No, I didn't. The yeah, so you should follow him at, at Modified Creation on Facebook. Um, he, uh, but yeah, he did. He did a custom where the. The arms and like upper legs and all that are like a, a light gray, so it's more uh, GI accurate. So yeah, no, it looks really good. Also, Sean had his baby today, so congrats. Yeah, congrats, Sean. Well, oh, Sean didn't have the baby, Sean. but you know, congrats to Amber. Congrats to the whole Sean family for growing. Yes. Mini Sean. I've heard it's a momentous occasion. Seems like it. Yeah. Well, kind of a big deal. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about Star Screams. <laughs> be really mean if we could have refused shots, baby. Yes. <laughs> there, there we we review people. I actually, not... I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the articulation on this new board. Doesn't seem very sturdy. <laughs> Doesn't seem very sturdy. No, no. The school it's seems language, a little off. Ability, its language ability is zero. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we we hope all the all the Sean family are doing okay. Oh, absolutely. All right, so what are we here to talk fun. about? I'm sure Lucas is showing it. I can't see it. Uh, I will sure. never review a baby on this. Show. Yeah, it is. It is uh, Earth three star scream. So you know. Back whenever they really, uh, revealed Wave 1 of, um, what was that, at San Diego Comic-Con? Is that right? And it was revealed that there was going to be another Starscream. I was like, oh, man, like, we just got Me one. Too. And so I was, I was like, man, I don't, I'm not even sure I'm going to get that figure. But of course I did. And, I mean, uh, That's a silly statement coming from Lucas. I have, right, yeah. Um... Oh, it looks like Tony got his too. So, so yeah, so uh, so I wasn't sure I was going to get it. There's some nitpicks that I had about the figure, and I still have those nitpicks, but they don't bother me as much as I thought that they would in hand. So, 
we probably have the same nitpicks. We talked about them briefly before the show, but uh, I'm sure we'll get to them. But I think everyone here probably knows that I'm a huge fan of this mold. Classic Seeker mold. Classic You've probably Seeker. seen some iteration of my display with them all in vehicle mode on a lightning poster. It's really dope. I'm hoping I get to set that up again soon. So I have like 30 or so versions of this classic Seeker mold, and I love it. I love it. I've never had a Seeker that I thought is better. Until now. Da, da, da. Kinda. Kinda. And, and we can get into that, too. I mean, the, the Earthrise figure... The, I was going to say, the Earthrise figure is, is kind of close to a modernized, scaled-up version of that classic. So It is it's very close, which... For me, is a very good thing. Yeah, that's the elephant in the room, or whatever. Here's here's the new fella. Here's the old fella, and of course, they've been upscaled. Old. So the thing that I think that really impresses me about this Earthrise Starscream overall is the paint. Like, I think that that is the number one, hands down. Like, one, it doesn't have that crappy siege stuff on there that, you know, I kind of, like, not. said, oh, it was okay or whatever. But, you know what, now that I don't have a Starscream with that Space Mud stuff on it, like, man, it's it looks so much nicer to have a clean version. It's so clean. And when all of them have the same kind of paint layout where they all look the same, it'll look better if they're all clean than they had all the same space mud pattern. Yeah, yeah it definitely will. Really the same space mud pattern time. was really weird. Yeah, it was... But what was weird about the Seekers in the fact that they had the same um, the same pattern is that like a lot of other molds didn't have those same right. patterns. So like if you... Like the Sideswipe, I think, and like the ratchet and ironhide and what like it's like all of them were just slightly different they weren't exact yeah it was really weird for them to do that i mean i know why they did it. it's very cheap to just use the same paint layouts for characters to look the same but right when you have something that's supposed to be like random like battle damage and that it's exactly the same it's disconcerting it is it was really weird so we got clean scream. He's much better. Uh, did you guys notice, or at least maybe maybe I noticed? Let's see. He uses the same colors as as far as like plastic molding colors as the Hasbro release of MP11. How I does it? Per- I noticed it in particular because this blue, it's kind of vaguely neon, and I thought it then, and I think it now. It looks really great with this gray, but uh, I just noticed that it, it looks like the same colors. That's really fun. I did not notice because I don't have that figure. Either of them. I was going to say, I don't have MP11 anymore, so I I sold him a while ago, so I don't have that to compare. I sold that Hasbro MP11 probably the day after I got it. Oh, wow. I I had my MP3 for a while. I have a thing with 3, and I'll never get rid of 3, so I didn't need that 11. Which but three yeah, do you like have? Colors. Do you have the one that was the Walmart version? I have the Japanese version of the, the one that was the Walmart one. Okay. Mm. So it's got a little bit different battle damage. It was the one I could get at the time that I was able to get it. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, no, this one, I love, like, just, I mean, again, the chest. Like, the, I, I don't know, it's probably hard to pick up on on my camera. I guess, but the paint inside, like the the thrusters on the chest, just looks so amazing. And like, yeah, it paint, actually paints yeah. it better on yours, Christian. Still hold yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say my lights kind of. There you go. They always feel nice. Yeah, the intakes there. Yeah, it looks really nice. I think that's the, the colors th- on this. I, I know I was just talking about colors, but the colors for the the paint as well. Very very good choices. The thing that bugged me most about the classics one, the very first one. The gray color on it was kind of not the right gray. This one. And Lucas, you got it. The red is not quite right. The yellow is not quite right. The blue is a bit dark. It looks good. It looks good altogether, but it's not accurate. This is accurate, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah. And so I've upgraded and got this one, which is the white version from Universe 2. And that's not quite right either, but it's better for me. And I never got any of the Japanese ones that were accurate because, well, I already had these. So this, Are you saying you had too many classic seekers? There were just too just many for you? <laughs> I just didn't need more than one per character in that display. <laughs> Course, well, I've got like you know I've got Starscream and G two Starscream and Black Death Starscream, but they're all drastically different uh, colorways. So that was my exception. So this would have been too close to classics. Would have been too close to Henke. Would have been too close to Aces. Would have been too close to whatever. Yeah, it makes else perfect it was. sense. Yeah. I mean, okay, it makes a a type of Christian sense for your big display. What can I say? So I want to say that I actually did get to see the figure. I did look at Lucas's, and I actually, like, this robot mode presentation, I really like it. I didn't expect to really like it, but I do really like it. It looks really nice. It looks very Starscream-y, whereas the um, the Siege Starscream, I felt like, kind of looked like it was a Seeker-type guy thing, but it wasn't really Starscream-y, like, especially in the face. Yeah, and the proportions were a little bit different. The face was a little bit different, and this one just like when I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's Starscream. How's he doing? That that's it's the really one cool. thing that the the Siege Starscream, like the the face sculpt that they did on that, is just not great. Whereas like this face sculpt is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it looks. I don't know what's going on with my light. Apparently, I need to get more lights, but that's okay. Christian's think... holding it up, and it looks good on his. I think it's actually about 5% too small. Am I the only one who thinks that? Let me know in the, the comments. The face or the head? The head. The head. The head is a little bit too small, yes. Just a little bit too small. A little, a little but bit. I'm comparing I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. I mean, the Make Toys one was uh, small, too. So, yeah. So I was gonna say, there you go. head is also normal. about 5% too small. That looks normal to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just your own know. sensibility. It's too small for me. But see, here's the thing, because of the coloration, because that's the right silver, and you can see him, and his eyes are like the right amount of sunken, and they got a good little dab of red in there that stands out and everything, I actually feel like that's a better face than this one. Oh, oh yeah, that's like the one bad thing, like I really love Meteor, uh, but that's the one thing I don't like about it is is that face, it's too dark. Yeah, I don't actually think that the, the face on Meteor is bad. It's just too dark. Yep. But I typically don't modify my figures, so... That might be so, my biggest nitpicks on this figure, and, you know, Let's we've... Do Let's do nitpicks. Um, I, you know, I, I think that the, um, the, where the, where the chest clips into the shoulders, uh, there's that little gap there. And that annoys me. I also feel I like it. that the chest is <laughs> so like, I wish it was more tapered. Like the thing that I don't understand is, is like on the original classics, like on that seeker mold, they made it so that, um, like this whole like chest is a, is a thing so that the intakes on the top, um, are like part of that piece. Like, I think it would have been better off if they would have done that. And then also if they would have made the chest a little bit more tapered, like it's just a little boxy. And like, that's the thing that just kind of annoys me about, about this figure. So. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because the figure would still be boxy. If they tapered that front end of the chest, it would be the same boxiness. It would just look less boxy. It would just be a presentation thing, which would make it look better. And of course, like also the um, the sides are are a little bit hollow. It actually, I don't really feel like in hand that you really notice it as much as is what I did in like pictures and whatnot. Uh, but it's still it's still there. See that one's a killer for me because that interferes with posing because I'm not going to pose them in a way that shows those and anything that interferes with posing. As you learned last week with Hoist bothers me a lot yeah i mean i just don't think it's enough to to really matter that much for me um i mean the cone the 
whatever the front of the um, what you call it plane or whatever is on the back. I mean, that's kind of annoying too. Um, I think that's kind of standard Starscream look. I don't mind it very much. I like I'm saying it doesn't bother me, but it you know something to note. And then um, like just the, the way that the legs are, where the tail fins kind of just like hang, are hanging out there. Oh man, I actually really like that. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that sounds weird, but uh, you know I'm used to this where they just kind of sit here and they don't move, they don't move and they just kind of interfere with how he can stand. So that the tail fins are connected to the ankle tilt mechanism, I really do like that a lot. Yeah, so and, that's where I'm coming from. And then of course the uh, it does have a lack of waist swivel, so it has a it has a thigh swivel. But it does not have an actual waist swivel, so that's. It does not. You know, it's. I I don't to me like I thought it was that was going to really impact the figure, but it doesn't just because it does have um you know toe tilt, um it has, I do actually like the way now I know some people have complained, um that the intakes aren't at the bottom of the feet, but I actually think that that makes it a lot more solid. Um, gives him uh, full feet and I like the fact that he does have this like ankle tilt um, so I think overall um, now he doesn't have a uh, wrist swivel but otherwise I think like comparing him to like MP11 like I would say that he actually pretty much has about the same level of articulation other than that wrist swivel wouldn't you say? That's a mean comparison but I think it's true I think it's true. A couple people in the chat have asked and mentioned, you know, is this the best official G1 seeker or is this the best um, non-MP or whatever, people, however people want to put it. We'll I'm going to say that, yeah, probably for me, oddly enough, even though I don't plan to own it unless it's released in some weird character I don't already have, I honestly think it is better than your other options. And for me, I'm going to be the outlier here. I'm going to say that for me, it's better than MP11 and MP3 as well. Because I don't like either of those toys. So therefore, I'm going to say it's better than those. It's not better than Meteor. It's not better than Magic Squares. It's not better than New Ages. But I'm going to say it's better than any other Starscream you can get officially, I guess. Hmm. I guess so. My, my favorite is Power of the Prime Starscream. What about Power of the Prime Starscream? Why that, did you say that's that the best Starscream you can, That's the best Starscream you can get. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm sorry. Are you... I, I hope you're joking here. Oh, I am. Oh, this is not satire, Lucas. This is the reality you live in. Because I feel like I would have to take away, you know, like, whatever, your TFLP card if you're trying to say that Power of the Prime's oh. figure is, like, the best. No, we both actually have shrines to... Power of the Primes um, Starscream in our houses that we don't tell you about. They're giants. You gave me enough time to transform both of these. This took like a third of the time to do. And that is something I, I want to talk about real quick because, again, I'm very attached to the classic Seeker mold. And this is obviously more complicated. It's, you know, 20 years newer. Let's see, actually, it's 14 years newer, right? And, of course, it's more complicated, it's bigger, it's, it's got 14 more years of engineering in it, so it's more complicated. But there's definitely something charming about how simple the classic Seeker is. You just kind of flip it, flip arms in, you know, just put the legs in, flip the wings, and you're done. This took a bit more, not substantially more, the steps are still kind of the same. They're just a bit more complex now. I don't like how the arms collapse into each other, that's not great. But it does make a really great jet mode and of course it you does. have the bottom jet kibble like all jet transformers have but as far as jet transformers go this isn't terrible and there's no obvious feet there's no obvious arms it's just a box on the bottom of a plane which is you know fine for what we have no but this is actually i mean i think that the jet kibble is actually less on that figure than it is a lot of seeker versions it's it's really close let's let's look at uh you know, classics. Classics pretty similar. Yeah, I think it does a really good job yeah. on the jet it mode. Does, it does a great job. I do miss landing gear 
it would be nice if it had, you know, some here probably molded in. Because you can see that <laughs> on the bottom bottom of the feet here. I don't know if you can see this in the both blue. But on the bottom of the classic molded feet, there's wheels molded in there. I and then sat you can, there you can yanking the on that white hinge. And, on the Did nose code really? forever so I was like this has to be the landing gear it's then eventually gear, I said oh wait gear. a second nope, obviously it's the transformation joint I just used but yeah. it looks like it the lack of landing gear was just bizarre like it doesn't matter who cares but at the same time it really bugged me right it's it, it's big enough that it feels like it needs it I think that's right. probably what it is for me I actually sense just fine without it, but... It does. Yeah, it's... Another thing to mention um, is that there is a port on the bottom of his flap, and so if you have a flight stand, you should be able to use that, like if he's in uh, jet mode, right? Like, so you should be able to flap that, or um, push that waist up or whatever and, and use yeah, you that. Yeah, should be able to. And then he also has one, like, in the back here as well. So that way, if you if you want to put him on a... Yeah, that's how I'd often peg him. Like, that's what I do with the, um, the Tetra Jet mold. I don't have... I don't have a Tetra Jet right now, but I do have my spinister done in the same way. You can set them so they're flying... It's fun. I, I don't like this port. It's not a huge deal, okay. but I don't like it. But it'll be nice if they do a G2 Starscream or G2 Ramjet and they have something that is akin to the sound box that goes Oh, right man, there. that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Obviously not a real sound box because they probably won't do that. But you know, something that looks like you know, a cannon emplacement or whatever just goes bloop right there. I I Ooh, am so really much. curious, like if they're gonna go nuts, uh, like at, at San Diego Comic Con or whatever, you know, like if they're gonna do like, you know, ten different you know versions or like the ones that we already got, um, like the Rainmakers or whatnot, right? Like, are we gonna get those redone? Can I talk about nuts for a second? Because we we were talking earlier and I said I was gonna do it. That this, you know, this classics mold is what I have, mm-hmm. and I have about thirty of them because they, they got all the colorways. They all look great together, and if I get my display set back up in my new place, I will uh, post a picture of that later this week. I've never felt the need to go crazy on another set of seekers, except masterpiece because they were easily available. And you know, the Tetra Jets were like, oh, do I really want like a dozen Tetra Jets? No. So Earthrise. I am prepared for crazy. Let's do it. Give me 30 of these. I'll take them all. I'm not abandoning ship on my classics, guys, but I will I will take a whole new set of the Earthrise mold. It's, You'll it's make another so wall? Good. I'll make another wall. Actually, really what I'll do, probably, is that these will stay, the classics will stay in vehicle mode the way I've had them displayed forever. But because they've all been displayed like that forever, I've had a dearth of seekers in my main like classics displays for a while these earthrise ones will take that place because they're the proper scale for bot mode and they look great in bot mode they look great in jet mode too i may switch them up every now and then but uh i'm ready to have two sets so uh randall in the chat says that uh that you've proclaimed it so it will be oh yeah like a collector (laughs) yeah well that's good i'm excited I mean, I'm excited for you to have way too many seekers again. You know, it's been a year since I finished up my classic seeker collection. And that you know, that, that was a long journey. It took forever. Got to start so back over. Got to start over again. Got to got to have a project. It doesn't, it doesn't take away from my accomplishment. I don't think. And I, I was worried that it would feel that way. Like I would be like, no, I hate the Earthrise one because I'm too attached to classics, or you know, I'm going to get rid of classics because I like the Earthrise too much. You know what? I think they can coexist for me. I think they can coexist. I think that when you put them side by side, the classics mold shows its age pretty bad. Yeah, and that's it's okay though because it is old. And I think it's that old. this is this is an awesome opportunity 
for us to actually kind of like shut up for a second about complaining about toys getting smaller or saying that they're getting less complex or anything else and just realize that, you know, 16 years later, the same exact design, the almost same transformation looks this much better. Like it actually has gotten a lot better and it does feel a lot better to play with. Like, I, I do like posing them. I do like messing with them. And it just feels a lot better. It looks a lot better. The face looks a million times better. It's just Absolutely. a million times better. It's mm. just a much better figure. And if anyone wants to say we haven't, you know, actually gotten better stuff after 16 years, we have. Yep. Now, this it costs a lot more than the Classics Mold did. The Classics Mold was like a $10 yep. peg at Walmart. <laughs> Although, depending on which version you get. That's true. That's true. It was around so long. I paid 35 bucks each for three Seekers last year to finish it up. And that was a deal because I bought three of the uh, Air Warriors at once. Thanks. But it makes sense. You know, you had to complete your... You had to catch them all, yep. so to say. And, the, I mean, I, I was not in a place to buy all those CHMS versions when I was in college, when they came out. So tracking it down later was a chore and I had to pay for it. And that's fine. I did it. I'm very happy with them. And I'm going to be happy with, uh, you know, 30 to 50 of these two. Well, you know, the thing is, is like, we all complain about, we're like, Oh, more G one. Right. But then you get stuff like this and you're like, Oh, like, like this is fantastic. Like, I mean, I think that that's the thing about, like, some of the Siege stuff where they're redoing it now in Earthrise. And as much, you know, as annoying as it is, like, they all look better. So, I mean, I'm, I'm ready yeah. for more Dotsons and, and, and Seekers and whatnot just because, you know, I enjoyed this, the Siege ones and I thought they were good at the time. But it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wait, you guys could, like, like you guys, you know, pull this. It's kind of like what... Um, I don't know, Thew did his uh, Optimus Prime re uh, review on the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And, you know, he was like, well, obviously they had to wait to release this one after Siege because who's going to buy that, the Siege Prime, after they see the Earthrise one, you know? And, you know, he's just like, dang it, Hasbro, you got me again! Um, kind of kind of thing. And, I, I mean, that's why I kind of feel like it's annoying that it's like a year later I'm buying this again, but... Man, like it's it, it's nice. It it is annoying. It definitely is. But it, taking out all of that, this figure is very very good. It is, and like I said earlier, I think that the Tetrajet guy, that mold, is just a weird thing. Like I don't think it's a traditional Starscream. It it looks like it looks like it could be Starscream in a completely different form, and that's what it is. But it's not a traditional Starscream. It was a different thing. If it had come out second, people probably wouldn't have bought it nearly as much. That's yeah. entirely right logically. But at the same time, like when you look back, when I look back and say, oh, I have some of the Tetrajet mold because I'm keeping the Rainmakers probably, maybe, we'll see. Um, having that and having this eventually, if they ever release something cool, um, it's fine by me. Yeah. Like, I think that's unique enough that even though this is better, like, objectively better, <laughs> that it um it's worth having both. So I won't cry so, too much. So, Christian, did you answer the question on which, uh, whether you like the MP3 slash MP11 better than than this one? I don't, think I don't know if did. I did or not, but I like Earthrise better. Yeah, I mean, I think that that I I'm I am certain that I am certain that Hasbro or Takara whatever are going to release a new Seeker and it's going to blow this thing away, you know, like next year or whatever. But I mean, it'll also probably be two hundred dollars or more. Um, he means the P Seeker, the masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, we were talking about how the new how there will probably be a third Star Screen. We figure. Everybody expects it, and it's probably going to be very expensive and very good. In the meantime, $30 charge screen. He's excellent. Yeah. It I would is. say, it now, Anna, really if you had to compare the New Age one, because to me, I still feel like New Age might be that, that Legends one. Like, 
you know, if we're just, you know, obviously everything is completely different scale. It's completely different. If we're playing like Anna, whatever. where we just compare everything and just buy whatever we like best. Right. What, do you think New Age or this one? Um, the New Age. Yeah, I think the New Age is better. I do think the New Age, just because it, it has full articulation. I think you that know, the it, look is a little bit both. like the um, the nitpicks that I have on this one, like New Age kind of solved those a little bit on there. So I, I think that the yeah. chest is, is a little bit better. And it also has die cast too. So I, I would go New Age. But I definitely think like, I mean, this this one's like good. It's not like I would feel bad like, oh no, I I don't own the New Age one and I only own this one. Like I I still think this, that this is a great figure. The spot I dislike most on the New Age, I also dislike most on this one. So therefore, like I'm really just comparing everything else about them because the the Earthrise has this hollow place under the arm and the New Age actually has part of the plane under the arms right to the point where it kind of looks hollow it's just that new age thing they do where they manage to get it to look mp from certain angles but then it looks like collapsed transformed parts from other angles it doesn't end up the clean look from every angle but it ends up the really clean look from one angle and because of that it's like it's the same flaw so I kind of negate those two together, and then everything else in New Age is just a little bit better um, than this one, which is good because it costs more money and is much smaller. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I think that's. Uh, I think the New Age seekers are what like fifty bucks. I think something like that. I can't remember yes, how much they cost. We live in a really weird mold, a really weird world as of today, which is what March tenth, eleventh, something like that. I'm just putting a date on this because I'm about to mention something that will probably go away relatively quickly. We currently live in a strange world where you can buy that one for $30. You can buy the New Age for about 50 Or there's one store that has the G2 version of this guy on sale for 50 right now. So we live in a very strange world at the moment where you can get really nice star screams all for, you know, like $50 or less. And you kind of have some good choices. Like, there's no wrong choice. Like, if you were to go out and spend $50 on New Age and you like Legends, you'll be happy. If you went and spent 50 plus shipping on this mold, you'll be happy. If you go and spend $30 on the Earth Fries, I think you'll be happy. They're all good options. You get some good Star Screams. That's nice. That is true. It's a good day for Star Scream fans. <laughs> Oh, there's also like, some Cyberverse Star Screams out there in the wild too. Sure. Okay. I've sure. Heard. <laughs> I bet they exist. They do. So yeah, so we needed to answer the question from the beginning of the show from the chat, which was, "Is this the best Hasbro Star Scream we've gotten?" And I'm going to say, yeah. Yep. I'm going to say yes so far. Unless, as as my friend Jordan mentioned earlier, unless you bring in, like, um, Prime Starscream or some other, you know, not G1 Starscream, then sure, yeah. Those might be better toys. Are they? I don't know. I don't have good. a Prime Starscream. I have an animated Starscream. The first, the first edition is very good. The Prid is not very good. Animated Starscream fights this guy pretty well just because he's so cute, but... That mold has not aged well, unfortunately. No, it probably has it. If I pick it up, it'll probably go. What? Oh, we'll find out. Me. But no, I think this is great. Like, I'm, I'm actually really happy with it, which is funny, because I... There you go, perfect. He's I'm like, really happy with it because I was one of the people who was just like, you know, this is stupid. Why release another Starscream so soon? And, I mean, I still think it's stupid. I still think it's mean to release another Starscream so soon, but it really is that good. I'm it's I'm really nice curious to see whether or not we're going to say the same thing about Megatron. So I went ahead and got it. So Man, what a, what a world that would be. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's Megatron in pictures looks like poop. <laughs> So bad. I'm not getting it, but Lucas, you can tell us. Subjectively, I'll, I'll subjectively. let you know. Yeah, the the problem is, is I'll be like Christian, it's great, and then you'll get it, and you'll be like, eh, it's me. 
So. And then I'll I'll come play with yours, and I'll be like, "This is garbage." Hey, I didn't know the Earthrise was coming. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I I am still like completely different than you guys. I like the Siege Prime better than the Earthrise Prime, but you're weird. That's just because I'm weird. Surge is by mine. <laughs> Surge is by mine from me, and I won't have to deal with it anymore. It'll be great. There you go. I love Siege Prime. He's great. So. One more thing about the, the Seekers here. Yeah. This Starscream has convinced me that it's going to be really okay for me to go ahead and sell my Tetrajet Starscream Thundercracker and Skywarp. Yep. So if anyone needs a Siege Skywarp for lots of money, I got you. He's coming the next day or so. And I want to say similarly, I was actually talking earlier about how, you know, I actually don't think I would cry if I got rid of my meteor and replaced it with that guy. Because meteor kind of annoys me for various reasons. This is a better toy. Like, this is a better meter, better engineered figure. However, for the Anna life, I'm not so sure it's actually the better toy to own. Right. To me, the meteor is not a toy. Like, it's not a toy. This (laughs) is a toy. This is a toy. Meteor is like an adult collectible. However, I, you know, my brain decides to categorize that. A mobile statue that you can fold into an airplane. There you go. It, they accomplish different things. So as far as like the best Starscream toy, it's going to be the Earthrise. Yeah, Every that's time. a good toy. Like, and I always complain about transformations, like no matter what. And that one was really easy to transform. And it was actually like vaguely fun. Like, I think there was slight joy coming from my brain. Nice. Very minor joy. I have issues with the way the arms hold up, like I said. The chest, the way it it hooks in, bugs me, but I just have to get better at it. There you go. You have to improve. Join Transformation Master. Go to the Transformation Championships. They had those at BotCon for a couple years. I actually think that would be really fun. Like, it's stupid, but it's fun. It was like a, it was like a kid event, so I was already too old when I started going for it to qualify for that. But they did it, and it seemed fun. See, we got to make it an adult event and have it be like in 36. Oh, God. There, there you go. Um, I do yeah, want to mention for next week, um, I don't know, are we having, are you guys having a show? We're going to try. Um, We're going to see what happens. I'm going to be on vacation myself. I'm going to Orlando, so I will be uh, not able to uh, to broadcast the show. So we'll see. We'll try and see if we can get uh, a replacement uh, for me. You know, so see maybe potentially Rob or you know if Anna can try and get it get it running on her computer. Yeah, but I otherwise, feel like we're gonna try to get someone to come on and talk about Lyo, the MP Lyo convoy. I guess that would be fun. And if I actually get the time to set it up, my, my PC can definitely run the software for this. It's just a matter of, will that happen? Find out next week, five minutes before we would normally go live. It will be more than five minutes. I will keep everyone in line. Six minutes. All right. Yeah, and then I, I do want to mention that uh, next Monday's TFLP is going to be pre recorded as well, since I'll be out of town as well, so... Ooh, a pre-record. That means I'm probably on it. Good job, Anna. Yep, yep. There you go. We get lots of Anna. You were on the TFLP uh, yesterday too. For you, like crashed at the end. So I did crash it. I did crash it. People were talking about me as if they liked me or something. So I decided to come. It was very strange. We decided, Christian, that if we mentioned Calculation King, that Anna would appear, and it happened. So wow, it was like a stunning circle. Yeah, I, I imagine it was exactly that. So, yeah, stay it three times in a mirror and, and Anna appears. And then I sat there with calculation keyed actually where my camera was instead of my own face. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be sure to catch that on the uh, air date. It's exactly what you would expect. Oh well, that one's hey. already out. That was yes, she was live. That, that was the that was the one. The that was the one watch yesterday. Now. Yeah. Yep, you can watch, you can watch it now. You can go back on YouTube and, and watch it now. So. Um, it was good times. It was good times. Yep. And uh, Mad Scientist Rick, I think, is going to make another appearance on Cut the Tape this week. So if you want to uh, check that out as well. 
And uh, if you like us and what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TFYLP. So. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Again, we, uh, you know, final final thoughts. We really enjoyed the Earthrise Starscream. There's a few nitpicks that we have, but for the most part, it is a great figure, and we all highly recommend it. So. Yeah, we do. Even me. There you go. Even Here's Anna, the- which is, like, few and far between on Siege figures. And I literally don't own it. I don't plan to own it. But I still recommend that you do. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for participating in the chat. Congratulations, Sean. See you later, Robot Friends. Thanks to uh, Jacob and Randall and Tony also and um, Jay Jeffrey. So thanks, everyone. Everyone. Thank you.